Let's give Mama Hamakusa another round of applause. This is a rare occasion, family. Uh, Mama Hamakusa has been with us for about 20 years. Yeah. And this is her who said it so many, thank you so much. We want to give you all an opportunity for questions and answers. Yeah. Some of you may be having these kind of questions, but before we do that, I'd like to introduce uh, those individuals from our Helene S. Mills facility who have traveled with us to Ghana. Yeah. And I'd like to invite you up. Del Walker, we thank you for this occasion. Del Walker traveled with us to Ghana, West Africa. This is one Africa and he'll have a chance to talk about his experience. Uh, Sherry Pettit, who's here with us, traveled with us to Ghana, West Africa for the first time. She had been in South Africa, and she traveled with us to Ghana. Can you come up front, please? And anybody else that traveled with us that I'm missing? But I want to say that Mama Amakus represents a very important person in my life. In fact, right here from the Mills facility, since I've been working as a calligraphy instructor for Fulton County, I've actually traveled to Ghana for two weeks with Bamani and uh, Bamani in Africa for the Africans three times. And the last trip, uh, which was last year before last, Sherry and Dale accompanied me, which made it such an honor. Um, it continues to transform my life. I can't speak for them. I took my first trip to Africa, South Africa, in 1985 with Operation Crossroads Africa, which was forerunner to the Peace Corps. Mm. You work, you study, and you travel. And it changed my entire life. I was 31 years young at that time, living in Louisville, Kentucky. Mandela was deep in Robben Island. Mm -hmm. I saw and witnessed apartheid firsthand. I went to Zimbabwe, where President Mugabe was. I went to Zambia, Lusaka, the home of the African, African National Congress, the ANC. And then I moved to Washington, D.C. to lobby for President Mandela's in the downfall of apartheid, etc. In other words, when I grow up, if I grow up, I want to be like Mama Amakus. I do. I stand for a lot of the things that she actually expressed. It's not so much that I dislike America. I come from a family of veterans on every level, from my father in World War II and my brother in Vietnam. But what I will say to you, family, is that the Helene S. Mills facility today has, for those of you who chose to stay, has kept a divine appointment in my opinion. Indeed, it's not a conversation that may interest me, but it is a conversation for today. And you've heard it. If we can answer your questions, you're talking to brothers and sisters who not only have America, but have great experience like Otha Greer and Dee Elder on world travel experiences, which of course include our motherland, the birthplace of civilization. I'm gonna stop right there and pass the microphone to my sister, Sherry Pettit, and maybe she can share a little bit about her experience of what she experienced in one Africa to give you a little bit of male and Bermuda. Um, I went to South Africa as my first trip to Mother Africa, and one of the people that I met when I came back here, I went to the gas station, and uh, they were owned by Africans, and I was sharing my experience, and they said that I should have just gone to London, England, if I went to South Africa, but it was an experience for me, and I really felt that I had the real experience of Africa when I went and visited the chalet and stayed at One Africa and had the experience of uh, knowing my name in Africa. We had a, a name changing ceremony on, on the ocean and it was just simply beautiful. The whole, the whole stay was, um, I had the chance to go to and visit orphanages there and uh, Bumani uh, had us collect and bring as well as donate money and uh, just items, school supplies and fun items like uh, I, I took one little girl, a, a, a doll baby, a black doll baby. And um, to know that they expected so little 
and they gave us so much. They performed for us, they sang, danced, they, they, you know, it just made you feel like you were coming home again. Um, and one experience my sister and I almost missed out on was uh, the 16 family members. Uh, uh, 16 people had uh, moved to Ghana from the United States and they put on a concert for us that I couldn't pay to have here. I mean, they sang, they danced. I said, who would think that I'd be over here doing the lion dance in Africa? <laughs> but it, it was a wonderful part. What was your name? Uh, Kosawa. Because I was born on Sunday. And I'm Yah, born on Thursday. Do y'all use that name every day? No, but we know it in our hearts. Oh. Beauty is. Okay. Good question. <laughs> but, well, some, some people do, some people don't. But uh, the experience was wonderful. We got a chance to go to where they took uh, the Africans before they even went to what they call the castles, are really the dungeons. It was a castle for the slave owners, but a dungeon and prison for, for us. And to just experience being down there was just really something very intense for me, and I can only imagine what they actually went through and uh, the experience I'll, I'll never forget and I will be going back again as soon as I get my change together. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, appreciate your uh, energy system. That was uh, great for you to share your ex experience of life. And I have a throughout the time from I've known you from December 2006 until now, and we've taken over 180 different people, and they have all landed at One Africa, and 100% of the group have said that One Africa has been their greatest experience on the journey of a lifetime. Fantastic. So we appreciate everybody from uh, the U.S. and the entire diaspora that have connected with us and been a part of our special program, and one of our great examples of a, a champion, a wonderful gentleman, uh, Del Walker has been able to join us on that journey and have expanded his travel across Africa and to the world. Well, my name is now Kwaku. Everybody say hi, Kwaku. Hi, hi Kwaku. <laughs> and the good part about it, Shadow, as we had said earlier, is that it was a life changing experience, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yes, I could go with knowledge of McDonald's, Burger King, and a couple of uh, Sears and Roba. But once you sit on the, on the surf and on the sand in between two of the largest facilities that transported people of our color and our hue to a place that they didn't ask to go. Mm -hmm. And when I sat there, and these, I mean, we're talking about major, major edifices. And of course, it's a, this is a, a uh, tourist attraction. It's a tourist attraction to see where people were desecrated. Mm. So the, the, what I just wanted to say is that it was a life-changing experience and I will never, ever, ever forget it. And as I sat there on the surf, uh, and I came back, I went forward and back. I was in Ghana, left the trip with them, went to Kenya, mm. then left from Kenya and went to Ethiopia. Excellent. And it was just an awesome experience. And when I did that, I knew then that my life had been change. And uh, so I, of course we want to thank everybody on that. Uh, we have, uh, this was a great thing, Matoya and the Helene Mills facility. This wasn't done three months ago, eight years ago. They allowed it to get together within eight days. Wow. And that's a great thing. Let's acknowledge the Helene S. Mills facility. Give us some love. Matoya, <laughs> thank you. We thank the leadership. And what's your birthday? Um, Date. Oh, uh, November. November 7th. November 7th. Whose birthday is close to November 7th? Um, you. Right here. Right here. Okay. What's yours? The 27th. The 27th? Are you closer? The 1st. The 1st. November 1st. Whose birthday is closest to? Who has a birthday closer to? Okay. Okay. Well, on that point right there is that uh, this is from a year ago. This is a, uh, a t-shirt from Africa. 
right there. It's from Kenya itself. And we just want to say, we love you. Thank you very much. Oh and God is good. In completing, let's acknowledge Dale Walker. We appreciate you, uh, Dale uh, Walker. Yeah, appreciate that was a wonderful presentation. Uh, family, I'm uh, glad to introduce myself. My name is Bomani Taima. And this is what I'd love to do is to reconnect our people from the African diaspora to the African continent and working with IMACs that have made that journey is all the much better because I know at the end of the day, no matter what happened at, at the beginning of the trip, at the end of the trip, we're going to go out with a blast. Yeah. Yes, so um, if you ever need to get some more information about traveling to Africa, you can, you can get one of my business cards. Uh, but our website is Africa for the Africans. Dot org. My phone number is 404-931-9429. And we have a wonderful journey coming up, a pilgrimage that you'll never, never forget. And it's coming up October 2015. And it's a two-week journey to Ghana, and we're going to spend three days in one Africa. But if you want to spend a lot more time there, she's more than willing to let you stay longer. <laughs> <laughs> and let me pass it off to Sass. Sass has traveled with us October 2000, uh, traveled with us October 2011, 2012, and 2013. So we appreciate our energy and all that she has done. Okay. Again, as we prepare to close, we thank you so much for working our Mama Amakus. And I just like to say, uh, does anyone have any questions for Mama Amakus at this time? We have about 15 minutes left before we complete, but don't withhold any questions of any kind. They can meet her right there at the table where those books are. Okay. Any questions? And we do have books that are available at the book table. We have inquiries about that. They're 20 and $25 equal. I may have missed um, your comment about your mother, mm -hmm. but did she ever visit you in Ghana? No, she didn't. No, she didn't. Please, don't be shy. I just wonder how far are you from the city of Accra? Three and a half hours by car, depending on traffic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great question. Anybody else, please? Oh, good. D. You've been over there for over 25 years. Yes. Do you have any regrets? No. No. So I have a question uh, for my mom. My mom, because so the book that you have written, Abio, Abio, Abio. Mm -hmm. What does it mean again? He or she who was away and has returned. He or she who has been away but has returned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm so glad you came back. Uh, I want to know where else in West Africa have you traveled to? Um, Togo, Benin, uh, Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Burkina Faso, Mali. I just travel. And then outside of West Africa, South Africa, East Africa, places like that. Great. Thank you, Jeffrey. Anyone else? Good. Yes. I'm a grandparent raising grandchildren. Yes. What, what do you know about what's happening with the grandparents in Ghana that's having to raise the grandchildren? Um, I'm not quite understand. What happens to the grandparents? What do you know about them? They, do you do? You, uh, are there any programs that you're aware of no, for grandparents that's raising? We really don't have um, those kind of programs. They just raise the grandchildren. What happens a lot of times is that when the when the parents and a lot of times the parents will travel. <clears throat> a lot of times the parents travel because there are no jobs locally. So the children are left with the grandparents, and they can stay with their grandparents for years. The parents will send money home, occasionally come to visit. 
but the grandparents, it's not just the grandparents, it's our village. All of us take the responsibility of raising the children. Mm -hmm. Is that okay. why they call us everybody mommy and auntie? You know, in Ghana, we're all mothers. So instead of, like here we have aunts and uncles. There you have senior mothers, junior mothers, senior fathers, junior fathers. In fact, I went to visit a young man, told me he wanted me to go and meet his mother. Um, his mother had died. So I said, okay. I went and paid my respects to the family. <clears throat> Two months later, he came and he wanted me to go because his mother had died. So I thought he was trying to pull a fast one. I said, because I just went to see about your mother who died. And now another mother died? He said, yes. That was my senior mother. This is my junior mother. Mm -hmm. So you can have five, six mothers and fathers. Thank you. The one thing I wanted to share, and I'm going to write to you, brother, is that that's one of the reasons that I'm just really drawn to, to Africa. It's not like I don't like America. It's just that some of the ways that things are done there resonate really naturally with me, like, this, like that particular scenario. I have many, many daughters and sons. I had my first biological daughter when I was 41. I'll be 64. So because I had my daughter later, and she's like 22, then before she came, I had all these other children just in case. And the love is equally there, you see. That's an African traditional value. I have two questions. Um, what's the main religion in Ghana? And the other one is, um, how did you get access to nine prayers? Okay, um, one, religion in Ghana, <clears throat> the primary religion is Christianity. It's primary. Then there are the Muslims, and then traditionalists in that order. And how did I manage to meet nine presidents? When I saw him, I walked up to him and said, hi, my name is Imacus. And how are you? Um, basically, OK, um, I met my first president, which was President Rollins, because I wrote him a letter and asked him what was happening with the dual citizenship that he promised us when we went to the United States. And surprisingly enough, he responded and uh, set up a committee to deal with that issue. Subsequently, um, he, we became on a, a first name basis. Um, the other president I met when I went to Benin, because we have a museum called the Black Convention Museum, and the president of the country came to see that museum. I met President Mugabe at the AU summit, and other presidents at various other functions. And I just don't have a problem walking up to people and saying who I am. I know who you are. So you need to know who I am. And the thing is that they're accessible. That's the thing, is that they are accessible to us. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you, my mom. And thank you for being as men's facility. Give yourselves a hand for such a wonderful, wonderful creative event. You are have a great day and